Paul's basically saying this, because I'm enduring afflictions, that's for your consolation and salvation. Now, let me ask you a question. Does someone get saved by you enduring affliction? No, no right? No one gets saved. You know, you, you get saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you don't get saved by someone enduring afflictions. You get saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the Bible often references the word salvation, it's not always in reference to justification. In other words, us going to heaven. That's not what it's in reference to. Sometimes it's just being referenced as delivering our flesh, right? You know, if I'm drowning in water and I call out to a lifeguard and I said, save me. I'm not saying, hey, witness to me so I, can go, so I can know for sure that I'm going to heaven when I die. That's not what I'm asking. Though that would be a good thing if someone's unsaved and they're about to die, amen? But what I'm saying is save my flesh, and that's exactly what Paul's saying here. His endurance of his afflictions is effective enough to help others endure those afflictions as well. Okay? Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let me turn there also. 1 Timothy. I'm sorry, uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Now, you'll see this theme commonly throughout uh, the writings of Paul when he's writing to, his, to Timothy or to whomever about him enduring afflictions. In fact, look at verse number 3. It says there in verse number 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. So here he's saying, Hey, Timothy, you need to endure hardness, man. You know, hard times are coming. Don't be a little sissy. Don't be a little snowflake. Get some thick skin. Toughen up a little bit. Okay? Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Skip down to verse number 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. What, is it? what, what are bonds? What? Chains, which are what? That's... Imprisonment, right? So in other words, he's saying, look, I'm preaching the gospel. And you know what's happening to me? They're arresting me for these things. So he's suffering trouble, like as if he's an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Look at verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for who? For the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Now, there's a false doctrine out there that says that the elect is referring to the Jews. Okay. Yeah. And they'll say, you know, oh, you know, the Jews are God's elect. These are the God's chosen people. God's not done with Israel. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. It's just like worship. Amen. Okay? Well, I don't believe that for one second. Amen. And the Bible doesn't teach that. You know who's the elect? You're looking at them. <laughs> right. Who's the elect? It's people who are saved. Is that, is that? And by the way, and they'll, they'll point to a verse like this and say, see, Paul endured hardness for the Jews so that they can get saved. Well, people don't get saved by someone else enduring hardness. That's weird. It's like, oh, man, that guy's enduring, so I'm going to go ahead and call upon the name of the Lord because I see that guy enduring hardness. That's not the way it works. But if you get the biblical context of what the elect is, it's saved people. He's enduring hardness for saved people. You say, but wait, hold on a second. But it says there that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. You say, you know, if, if it's saved people, why do they need salvation? Well, let's read on. Verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, he, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Now go to chapter 3 and verse number 10. Chapter 3 and verse number 10. So keep that in mind. He's saying, I'm enduring afflictions, hardness, for the elect's sake, so that they can attain salvation. All right? Look at chapter 3, verse 10. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I what? Endured. But out of them all, the Lord, what did he do? Delivered me. So when he was going through afflictions, trials, persecutions, what did he do? He endured. And because he endured, what did Jesus Christ do? He delivered him from all those things. Okay? Because remember, salvation is not always in reference to being justified. Sometimes it just means being delivered. Delivered is just another word for salvation. 
Make sense? So verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So why is Paul enduring hardness? Well, for one, because he doesn't want to be denied the rewards that he's going to get when he meets Christ. But for two, for the elect's sake. Why is that? Because when someone sees you enduring hardness as a good soldier, what does that do? That motivates you to endure hardness. That turns a coward into a bold lion. You see someone enduring hardness, it's just like, man, I don't know if I can do that. But then you see the Lord delivering that person from the persecutions and afflictions. And what do you say? You know what? If he can do it, I can do it too. It causes people to wax bold in the Lord. Okay. Now let me further prove this point. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul's writing this and he's talking about dying. He's talking about going, to, going home to be with the Lord. And look what he says in verse number 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So he's telling people, hey, Timothy, you better endure hardness, because I'm ready to be offered. And guess what? Because I endured, now that I'm ready to be offered, I'm going to receive a crown of righteousness. Which, what do we see in chapter 2? He says this, if we deny him, in context of not enduring afflictions, he will also deny us. Deny us what? The crown of righteousness. You see, that's a prime motivation to make sure that you stick it out in the Christian life. You say, well, I've done so much work, though, you know, and, and you know, I, what if I just backslide just a little and I get out of church and I do all these things, but I've done so many things. You know, all those things are going to perish. Right. You only, a man is not crowned yet if he, strive, if he doesn't strive lawfully, the Bible says. Okay? You need to make sure you're enduring to the end to get those rewards. Not, to, not for salvation, obviously. Salvation is sealed as soon as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But after that, when we're working for the Lord, guess what? When do we get paid? When we make it all the way to the end. When we endure all the way to the end. That's what happened to Paul. He says, because I endured, I'm receiving a crown of righteousness. Now skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith. Sorry, Alex. I, he always looks at me and I always look at him when we read this verse. <laughs> Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. That doesn't sound like your very loving message, Paul. You know, the Lord reward him according to his works. Verse 15, of whom be thou where also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. So this is a guy who was persecuting. He's afflicting the Apostle Paul, right? Look at verse number 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. This is affliction. I pray God that it, might, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was what? Delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So again, what do we see when he endured the persecution of Alexander, all the trash talking, all the criticisms, all the hindrances? He endured all those things. What happened? He, the Lord delivered him out of the mouth of the lion. Verse 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. So what's the principle there? The principle is this. We need to endure hardness so that others can watch and see that as an example and endure hardness as well. 